Area specific curettes. Design. The area specific curette is semicircular in cross section. It has a rounded back and toe. This design allows it to be used both supra gingively and sub gingively. An area specific curette has only one cutting edge per working end. The face is tilted at approximately a 70 degree angle to the lower shank. The curette has curved cutting edges and a rounded toe that enhance adaptation to rounded tooth surfaces and root concavities. An important difference among the sickle scalar, universal curette, and area specific curette is the relationship of the face to the lower shank. The face of a sickle scalar or universal curette is at a 90 degree angle to the lower shank. The cutting edges on these instruments are level. The face of an area-specific curette is tilted in relation to the lower shank. The tilted face causes one cutting edge to be lower than the other edge on each working end. The lower cutting edge of an area-specific curette is automatically at the correct angulation when the lower shank is parallel to the tooth surface to be instrumented. Technique practice. Area-specific curette on posterior sextant. As an introduction to using an area-specific curette on the posterior teeth, first practice on the mandibular right first molar facial aspect. Before beginning, take a moment to self-assess your position and your patient's position. Correct them now if needed. Throughout this technique practice, stop every so often to reassess position and grasp and correct them if necessary before proceeding. First, select the correct working end. Use a tooth that is easily seen, such as the first premolar. Establish a finger rest and randomly place one of the working ends on the distal surface. Study this working end. Note that the lower shank is not parallel to the distal surface. Also, the functional shank is down and around the tooth. This is the incorrect working end. Look at the opposite working end. Note that the lower shank is parallel to the distal surface and the functional shank goes up and over the tooth. This is the correct working end. Establish a finger rest and get ready for insertion. Turn the toe of the working end toward the distal surface as this is the direction in which you will be working. Place the working end in the get ready zone at the distofacial line angle in the middle third of the crown. Prepare for insertion by lowering the instrument handle to establish a zero degree angulation. Gently slide the working end beneath the gingival margin and onto the distal surface of the root. Adapt the toe third of the working end to the distal surface of the root. Imagine that you are locking the toe third against the tooth surface. Move the instrument at least halfway across the distal surface. Remove the curette from the pocket in preparation for the facial surface. Place the working end in the get ready zone. Lower the instrument handle and gently slide the working end beneath the gingival margin. Imagine the face sliding along the facial surface all the way to the base of the pocket. Reposition the lower shank and make controlled strokes across the facial surface. Be sure that each upward stroke is distinct and that you pause slightly to relax your grasp and slide the working end back to the base of the pocket. As you approach the mesiofacial line angle, roll the handle slightly to maintain adaptation. Keep the toe third locked against the tooth surface during all instrumentation strokes. Make sure that your strokes extend past the midline of the mesial proximal surface. Use of horizontal strokes. Horizontal strokes are extremely effective in removing calculus near the distofacial and distolingual line angles of posterior teeth and the midlines of anterior teeth. Insert the curette slightly distal to the distofacial line angle. Lower the instrument handle until the curette working end is oriented with the toe toward, but not touching, the base of the sulcus or pocket. 
begin a calculus removal stroke slightly distal to the distofacial line angle. Make several short, controlled strokes around the distofacial line angle. After completing several strokes, reposition the curette to continue making oblique strokes across the facial surface. Lower the handle until the curette toe is toward, but not touching, the base of the sulcus. Make several short, controlled horizontal strokes across the midline of the facial or lingual surface. Use of an area-specific curette on anterior sextants. Choosing the correct working end, anterior tooth. Practice selecting the correct working end for the mesial surface of the central incisor. Place one of the working ends against the midline of the facial surface. Carefully look at the working end. If the instrument face tilts slightly away from the tooth surface, you have selected the wrong working end. If the instrument face tilts toward the tooth surface so that the face is partially hidden, you have selected the correct working end. Technique practice, area-specific curette on anterior sextant. For this technique practice, work on the mesial surface of the mandibular right central incisor. Aim the toe of the working end toward the mesial surface as this is the direction in which you will be working. Place the working end in the get ready zone. Gently slide the working end beneath the gingival margin to the base of the pocket. Adapt the toe third of the cutting edge to the tooth surface. Imagine that you are locking the toe third against the root surface. Make controlled strokes across the facial surface. As you approach the mesiofacial line angle, roll the instrument handle to maintain adaptation of the toe third of the working end. Continue strokes until you work at least halfway across the mesial surface.